Welcome to Understand. Have you ever wished you could scan your code for weaknesses or patterns, but not really sure how to do it? Well, CodeCheck is the solution you've been looking for. CodeCheck allows you to run your code against published coding standards, our recommended checks, or even your own custom standards. These checks can be used to verify naming guidelines, metric requirements, published best practices, or any other conventions that may be important to your team. In this video, we'll go over how to navigate CodeCheck, how to create and run a custom configuration, and a few different ways to view your results. Once you've gotten the hang of CodeCheck, you'll be using this tool to strengthen your code all the time. Here we have a sample C++ project open. Let's start by selecting checks from the top level menu and opening the CodeCheck tab. Here at the top of the tab, from left to right, we have our list of configurations, our filter for telling CodeCheck which files to run the checks on, our inspect button which runs the checks once we've configured them, and on the right hand side is our results dropdown, which allows you to choose how the violations found are displayed to you. Let's add our own custom configuration and run it against our project's code. To open the configuration interface, press the wrench icon next to the configuration dropdown, right here. Here we can configure any number of checks to run. The sandbox is your playground. When you're in your sandbox, you'll see every single check available to you in one place, and you can pick and choose which you want to run quickly and easily. Use the sandbox for running one-off checks or playing around with the configuration you may like. But if you'll be running a certain set of checks repeatedly, you're going to want to create a custom configuration. As you can see below the sandbox, Understand comes with some default configurations that include our set of recommended checks and all of the published standards. To create a new one, you can either duplicate an existing one by right-clicking it, or selecting it and pressing the Duplicate button at the top, right here, or by pressing the plus button. I'm going to create a new one, and I want it to be a configuration that looks for unused entities in my project. So inside Tools Recommended Checks, there are a few different ones that look for unused code. So I'm going to create one and name it Unused Entities. And I'm going to add the checks for local variables and static globals. And press Save to save my configuration. Note that when you have a check highlighted, a detailed description will pop up. And if there are configurable options for the check, those will appear in the same area as the detailed description. Now that we've saved our configuration, you can see we're not in edit mode anymore. So I just have a clear list of the checks in this configuration. So it turns out that I missed the unused functions check. So to go back into edit mode, let's press the pencil icon at the top. We'll select that check as well. And press save. Okay, now that we have our configuration, let's press close and get back to the main tab. If we want to edit which files we run the config on, just use the Files dropdown, right here, which has convenient filters such as uncommitted changes, or we can press the button to the right of it, and we'll be able to select just recently changed files, files changed in or after a particular git commit by providing the hash, or just selected files from your directory structure or custom architecture. So in my case, I only want to run this configuration on the source directory. So I'm going to go to Selected Files, expand the directory structure, and just select source. Press OK. All right, now we're ready to inspect. So here at the top of the results page, we can see how many violations were found, how many files we ran the configuration on, and how many checks were in the configuration. Right now, we're viewing the results by file. To change how we view the results, press the drop down in the top right. Here we can view violations by file, by checks, in a locator view, a tree map view, or we can see the summary log. Let's go to the locator view and search for violations in the file scintillaiface.cpp. So I'll go over to the file text box here, and I'll start typing that in. We can also search for a specific function to narrow the search down even further. So I'll type into the violation, add text, and now I found the violation that I was looking for. So to preview the violation, simply click on it, and you'll see a preview down at the bottom. Note the columns on the right show us the entity flagged, the line and the column numbers, and which check flagged it. 
which would be unused functions in this case. To get to the location of the violation in the editor, simply double click the preview or the violation and you'll be ready to start refactoring, like so. Let's go back to the code check tab. Just below the total violations, you'll see options to set these violations as a baseline for your project, print them, or export the results. Let's export these results to a CSV file. And select where to save it and press save. Now it's ready to send to our colleague to use. So this was a short look at CodeCheck and Understand. Today we covered how to create and run your own custom configuration and how you can view the results of your inspection. As you can see, it's a great tool for doing quick static analysis and figuring out where you could improve your code. For more information on CodeCheck or any other tool within Understand, visit support.sidetools.com.